Hi everyone, welcome. I'm down here in my wormery and I'm all set to check in on this bin over here. This bin was last checked in on 10 days ago and 10 days ago is when we came in here to give it its last feeding. It received a pretty good variety of different types of veggies and fruits. I remember banana peels, I remember cantaloupe rinds, I think I remember some apple peel and I'm pretty sure there were other things too. And it received its feeding over here where the coffee filter is indicating to us where we last fed. So I'm going to uh, remove these coverings, see how that last feeding is holding up, and if it seems appropriate to do so, we're going to add another feeding today. We've been getting into this 10-day pattern to maintain a consistent interval between the check-ins. The one thing I'm able to see from here, possibly not so easy to see from your perspective, is how this, um, this whole surface here has dropped considerably where the feeding was applied. So, you know, considering the types of delicious foods that were put in here, it's not too surprising. And I would imagine that we're gonna still see leftover banana peels, because those are the sort of things that um, don't really get eaten up in 10 days time. They'll eventually go, but they're kind of a tougher material. But some of the other things that were put in here could possibly be close to the finish line. So I figured before we come back in here and feed today, we would want to make sure that it's appropriate to do so. I don't want to create too much of a glut of excess leftover foods in my systems, even though I am pretty much a generous feeder for the most part usually. I, um, I also want to keep in mind the fact that sometimes the right thing to do is to um, just let it ride and not give them you know, more food than they really need in the system. So I'm not even sure what we're seeing here. There's some green color. Maybe there were some cucumber peels. Like I said, there was a pretty wide array of different things placed in here. And I think this right here, the stem of a pumpkin, was not really part of the previous feeding. This actually um, stems back to the last time we fed on this side. So we haven't really been feeding in the same spot. You know, in a lot of my videos, you see me just feeding in the same spot, always down the middle. In this system, though, we decided we're going to alternate the feedings from one side to the other and since this is where we last fed where the marker was where all these leftovers are showing up the idea here today was to you know switch sides and go feed on the other side and usually I've seen that if you keep alternating the location of the feeding somehow it seems like it can squeeze a little bit more food into the system because while maybe the previous batch of leftovers are still being worked on you can you know lure a few of the uh, other remaining worms in the system over to the fresh food where they can get started on that. I think a lot of these items, maybe this was like resting up against something. Sometimes when pieces of food are butted up to one another, there's you know not enough room for the worms to squirm in between. Or maybe they don't even bother because there's just so much extra other good things for them to nibble on nearby that they don't bother to try to get at some of the less easily accessible uh, portions of the food. But I mean right here too, you can see cantaloupe rinds that still have a good amount of the fleshy material of the fruit on them. And I think, you know, cantaloupe rinds, I sometimes I even see the that tough part of the rind months later after, uh, after giving the worms cantaloupe rinds. And obviously something like a, a stem of a pumpkin is going to take a good long time too. So I think some of the leftovers we've found so far are the sort of things that you would definitely expect to find leftovers of. So no surprise there. I guess it would be surprising if there were a whole bunch of, you know, very easy to eat foods in here that were just being ignored. So I don't think we're seeing that. I think all we're seeing here is sort of the natural breakdown of the foods, the ability of the worms to break things down quickly depends on the food itself and various other um, conditional variables, if that makes sense. You know, temperature, for example. If it's too cool, the worms might slow down. Perhaps even the dampness, if there's not enough moisture around, the worms just can't really, um, you know, get into the material if it's dry, even if, even if there's a delicious morsel of food in there for them. So it does seem like we've got a pretty good turnout over here. But this is not really the focus of today's check-in. I, I just always want to see how the previous feedings are holding up to time. 
and then um, you know be able to reflect on that information later so for example if we come back in here another 10 days from now to um, put more stuff in here we can probably still expect to see some leftover cantaloupe rinds and stuff like that but it would certainly seem appropriate to put more food in here 10 days from now considering the pace at which you know stuff is breaking down so when we come back in here we're definitely going to find bits of this leftover bedding some of this paper and cardboard we're definitely going to see this stem of a pumpkin still being worked on gradually but I like the I like the progress we're seeing here so I'm gonna put these leftovers back where they belong and since we did sort of stir up this feeding area I've surfaced some of the things that were food so a lot of the stuff sitting out here on the top now is leftovers I'd like to just keep this stuff covered you might have noticed little flying insects here and there I don't really think that this system right here is the root cause of um, the bugs I think the little insect just came over here to check things out I only saw one or two it's, it's another of my systems where I suspect the um, issues to be with that so I'm attempting to rectify that hopefully it'll reduce the presence of flying insects down here in my systems but that still remains to be seen so the, um, the side of the bin that we planned on feeding is over here and here I don't see a great deal of change in the level the thing that we had in here was a pretty large object and an, and an object that could take some time for the worms to break down. It was a, it was pretty much the outer rind of an entire pineapple, but I had carved it up in a way that it, it pretty much stayed intact as one piece. And there were a few little fragments of it thrown in there as well to go along with the outer skin or whatever it is, the outer peel of the pineapple. But, um... I don't think it's the sort of thing that we should expect to see break down very quickly. So just one of those things I think we're going to see leftovers of for quite some time. And it even made me question whether I would want to put more stuff into this side or maybe even skip today's feeding, you know, with, um, with the presence of some leftovers over here. Not many, obviously, just a few chunks of cantaloupe, but also the, well, the leftovers of the pineapple. You know, I was wondering if I might do the system some good by just prolonging the interval between feedings for a little while to let them get caught up to my ambitious feeding regimen here but then again you know then there's always that flip side of the coin that makes me worry that hey maybe even though there's a whole bunch of stuff in there that they could possibly be eating it's not the sort of stuff that they can eat right away it's stuff that really needs a certain degree of decomposition to occur first before the worms can move in and do their thing so it is possible that what's going on down here is not really of much interest to the worms at least not yet because here's this <laughs> this is what I was referring to this is the pineapple so I guess this is kind of the um, this is the laid flat version of it but if you can imagine these four wings of it being folded up that's the outer skin of the, the pineapple it wasn't a very very large pineapple I just sat down one day and ate it so it was like a single person size and I was just curious to see what would become of this I threw this thing in the freezer it, it, it you know it became a pretty much a big block of ice <laughs> it even froze into a huge clump so we had to throw it in here as a big mass so it is possible that in the very beginning since it was kind of jumbled up in its folded up form since it was frozen I couldn't unfold it you know that could have um, slowed its breakdown but you know ever since the subsequent check-in that occurred after when we came in here to put the last feeding in we did unfold the thing and spread it out and here's a few other things that were placed in here alongside the pineapple a couple pieces of citrus there was one lemon and one orange and then these things that you're seeing here, those are kind of the core, the middle fibrous part of the pineapple that you usually discard because it's a little chewy. You usually work the, um, the outer part of the um, fruit out of the thing and then you discard that inner core and the outer skin, obviously. So I think the real question here was, do I feed or not? You know, I deliberately skipped bringing food down here for them, thinking that maybe the best decision would be just to check in and see how things look and possibly skip feeding and then 
maybe even alter our game plan on how to handle this system because this seems like this edge of the bin might go nowhere for quite a while. So I don't really know what to expect. A lot of other people's um, videos I see on YouTube, I see other worm farmers with pineapple and the pineapple eventually breaks down but maybe it's still just too early here in this system. So I believe that's maybe three weeks now if it was 10 days for that veggie mix and fruit mix last time and then 10 days prior that would be 20 days that's just short of three weeks and perhaps that's just too soon to expect any sort of significant progress on on a feeding such as this and you know as you can see the presence of worms over here is pretty minimal so I mean I've even wondered if it would be possibly the right thing to do um, of just you know abandoning the <laughs> pineapple and pulling it out but it's other people's successes that makes me feel like I should just stick with it and see what happens you know and what I've got here is the cork <laughs> the cork that we once in a while bump into depending on which year it is and which system we're in it just goes from system to system and for whatever reason when I just picked it up it seemed somehow smaller than it has seemed in the past and you can see there's a good amount of worm interest for whatever reason so it's always interesting to see what's becoming of this cork especially when you finally start to see worm activity worms burrowing into it worms expressing interest about it and it only took a number of years to get to this point <laughs> check back in another couple years and maybe it'll be gone so definitely a slow composting material that cork so I don't know I think I'm kind of going to follow my gut here you know and I think I'm going to skip you know I don't want to feel forced into feeding just because we've established sort of a you know a game plan to switch sides of the bin every 10 days and come back to feed there's no guarantee especially if you're going to be trying different experimental types of foods that you normally don't give your worms with kind of unknown um, results got to remain flexible and I think that's the most important lesson to be learned in situations like this is that you know don't want to push it you know because then you could probably end up creating more harm than good in your system by doing that luckily I'm not observing any bad signs here because I guess there's always that possibility that some sort of you know rotting can occur here as long as it's all the normal bacteria and microbes and fungi that you find in a typical worm bin is working the stuff down gradually then that's fine it doesn't really create any odors but you know there's always that other um, form of decomposition where things are, start to just rot and stink and I don't know if you know pineapple really has the potential to get that way or not but if it shows any signs of that it's coming out that's for sure so hopefully you'll agree with me that skipping today's feeding on this side of the bin is probably the best bet and maybe next time we come back in here we'll just return to the other side where we're probably going to find little or no leftovers and i don't think that's going to be a problem i think you know giving these little guys a little bit more time to keep at this is probably the safest way to play it rather than trying to force some sort of a schedule or feeding interval pattern that you've decided to try to stick to so I'm going to just return everything down into the feeding area perhaps I should spread it out again so I don't create a big clump so that the worms can approach it from all directions <clears throat> and you know what even though the system seems like it's got a lot of stuff in it for only being maybe 65 or 70 days old I forget how old this thing is but it's a little bit over two months old it definitely feels like it's got a lot of good weight and it's got a lot of good mass but I still feel like I want to add a little bit more so I'll be right back my supply of ready-made bedding materials is dwindling so I'm definitely gonna have to shred some more but I do want to kind of lay a little bit in here perhaps even if it's just a tiny bit just to give the worms some sort of a medium to crawl through if they want to approach the food from below maybe even something for some of these remaining juices in this stuff to be able to soak into a little bit as time goes by so we'll see what we could do about spreading all this stuff out and I guess the cork can stay in here maybe we'll bump into it again in the future it's been some time I think that we haven't seen that it's been the evasive cork so I'm just gonna see if I can maximize the surface area here 
spread the foods that remain out. And I'm curious to see what it's going to take for the worms to finally take a shine to this food because it is taking a while now. I did expect a little bit of a delay in the action over here. So I don't know exactly when they're going to start to take an interest in it. Hopefully soon. Pineapple's just one of those things that I rarely, if ever, place into my worm bins. Perhaps in a couple occasions in the past I've done it, but it's just not one of those things that you normally have around, or at least not here. Here's some leftover um, cantaloupe brine. Interesting how that stuff looks after a while. It looks like paper, and you can only identify it because of that tough kind of web interlocking pattern that it's got. And this takes a little bit longer to go because it's almost like a woody kind of texture. The worms need a little extra time to break down. So let's get everything put back here and just let this continue as is. So I am curious to hear what people have had experiences with as far as pineapple. I mean, am I seeing kind of an expected result here? Or is what I'm seeing here kind of weird and I should begin worrying? To me, it somehow seems like it's kind of normal. Because besides, you know, the pineapple, there was also the orange and the lemon in here. All of which are, I believe, classified as citrus foods. Which suggests that there might be some citric acid in there. And maybe that's just putting the worms off, at least temporarily, until the stuff dissipates into the system. Or at least until some sort of bacteria that can handle it breaks it down. Or whatever it is that happens to that stuff. Um... So what do we do with our feeding zone indicator? We didn't feed, but I guess the last feeding was here, right? And it just, uh, just goes back a little further now. Well, 10 days now, but, you know, maybe it'll be another 10 days before we check in here. I think this system will do fine without any, any additional foods. So we'll just let it ride, and we'll check back maybe in another 10 days, see how things are coming along. At that point, I think I probably will feed regardless of how that pineapples coming along by then I would think that the um, the remaining bits of cantaloupe will be few so at that point they'll probably be needing some food but it did seem like there were a good amount of leftovers in here still and there's always that pineapple so we'll see so that's it for today's video not too much to be seen here I'm just interesting to see how things are progressing I knew there was a little bit of a twist in here with the types of foods that had been added recently so I just want to remain flexible and not try to force any sort of agenda. So hopefully you agree that I'm doing the right thing here. If there's anyone out there that's got experience with um, pineapple and can tell me what to expect or tell me if what I'm seeing here is normal at least, then that would be interesting to hear. So please put your comments down below. But other than that, I think we're done here. I've got a few things i got to clean up and put away, but I'm not going to keep you around for that. That's boring. Before I go, though, let me really quickly say thank you. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, as always, please don't forget to leave me a quick thumbs up before you go. And if you haven't done so already, please also consider subscribing to the channel. All right, everyone, have a great day. Thanks for watching. Bye now.